Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today we will be discussing invertebrates. Today's objectives will be, number one, how are invertebrates classified? Number two, what is the common characteristic of all invertebrates? And number three, what role do invertebrates play in maintaining a healthy environment? Let's first ask the question, how are invertebrates classified? Invertebrates account for 97% of all animal species, and according to the fossil record, they are the first animals to have ever appeared on Earth about 600 million years ago. Invertebrates got their name because they have no backbone. And there are six major groups of invertebrates. Uh, they are the sponges, the cnidarians, the mollusks, the worms, the echinoderms, and the annelids. Here are some pictures of different types of invertebrates like the snail, the turtle, and this earthworm. And as we go further into discussing animals, I'll explain why they're categorized into their specific groups. So let's talk about the body structure of invertebrates. All three types of symmetry are represented when we're talking about invertebrates. So the three types of symmetry that we've discussed were the, uh, were the asymmetrical body plan or asymmetry, which means they're not really a body plan at all. They can be any shape uh, or any type of size. And then we have the bilateral symmetry, which just means that both sides, the left and the right, uh, the two sides that make up that body look exactly alike. They're mirror images. And then we have the radial symmetry, which just means that the body parts or body plan are arranged in a circle. So all invertebrates can show one of those three types of symmetry, but also the body structure can have a type of skeleton uh, of invertebrates. Most invertebrates will have some type of what we call an uh, exoskeleton. And that's just that outside skeleton that helps to protect the inner soft-bodied animal. Crabs, for example, have that exoskeleton or that shell. And, and a lot of insects, uh, the majority of insects also have an exoskeleton. Shells are also um, a type of body structure that helps to protect the soft body inside, such as snails and other shell, little shell organisms that you might find at the beach. Uh, the, uh, there's also can be uh, animals that have a kind of a spiny outer shell or outer covering, such as the sea urchin. And then finally, we have a what we call a hydrostatic skeleton. And this is more like, you wouldn't necessarily think of it as a hard skeleton, but more of a fluid-filled sac or cavity surrounded by muscles. And you would see this type of skeleton in an organism like a jellyfish. 